Hello students, welcome to Chase Science. Today we are going to study about support and movements of organism. We human are animal, right? So think about a day. We are moving from one place to another. Also, we are moving our body parts. Not only the animals but also the plants and microorganism shows the movement. So, what do you understand by the term movement? Living organisms change the location of their whole body or a part of its body as a response to a stimulus. This is known as movement. Different organisms use different appendages to move. Okay? For example, amoeba use pseudopodia for locomotion while Euclina use its flagella. We observe paramecium as slipper-like cells use their hair-like cellular organelle called cilia for locomotion. Then think about us, we human and other animals like cheetah, toad use our limbs for locomotion. Then what about feces? Feces use their flippers for their locomotion. Apes such as crow and parrot use their wings for their locomotion. Then what about invertebrates? Invertebrate animals like earthworm, leech, snail and cobra do not have any special appendages for their locomotion. They use their muscles for their movement. But the vertebrates use both muscles and bones for their movement. Okay, So bones and muscles not only help to maintain your body shape and rigidity but also help for movement. So, it is important to know about the features of muscles. Muscles have the ability to contract and relax. It means they can contract or relax and also they have the ability to reach the original position again. So, let's consider about the human elbow joint. So, when you observe this elbow joint, you can observe two different muscles okay the upper muscle is known as bicep muscles and the lower muscle is known as tricep muscle these bicep and tricep muscles are essential for the movement of elbow joint when bicep muscle is contracted the hands bends and lifts up when the tricep muscle is contracted the hand is stretched then the bicep muscles comes to its original resting position. So now we understand how these vertebrate animals use their skeleton as well as their muscles for moving their body parts. Now we discuss enough about the support and movement of animals. Let's study about support and movements of plants. There are two different varieties of plants, right? They are wooden plant and non-woody plant. You may have noticed on sunny day, the non-woody plants get withered and the stem is bent down. Do you ever think what is the reason for this? It's due to the lack of water supply to the plant. The xylem vessels which transfer the water carries the water as a continuous column inside the plant. This gives the support which is essential for the plant to stand erect. But think about woody plant. If you are not watering the plant for several days, they are not showing these signs such as withered or stem is bent down. This shows the woody plant does not depend on water for standing erect. There should be another factors which responsible for this. Okay, so it's due to the presence of various chemical substances such as cellulose and lignin deposited in the walls in the hardwood of the plant. Mainly the dicot plants shows the secondary growth, right? This gives more strength and mechanical support to the woody plant. So now we discuss about the support of plants. Let's discuss about movements of plant. Growth of a part in a plant as a response to a stimulus or changes of the location due to a turgor change is known as movements of plant. There are two different types of movement. One is tropic movement, the other one is nastic movement. So, you should understand the difference between these two movements. Tropic movements are growth or movement that occurs due to a direct influence between the direction of stimulus and the direction of response. Tropic movements occur due to the effect of growth substances. We already studied about the growth substances in our previous video. Okay, so these tropic movements can be occur towards or away from the stimulus. If it occur 
towards the stimulus it's known as positive tropism if it is away from the stimulus it is known as negative tropism plant shows several tropic movements we already study about the positive phototropism when we discuss about oxen right due to this positive phototropism only the stem growing towards the light geotropism here the stimulus is the gravity of the earth the gravity of the earth is always acts towards down right so the growth towards the earth gravity is known as positive geotropism roots growing towards the ground then think about the plant stem they are growing away from the ground right so we name these tropism as negative geotropism water is essential source for plant root absorb this water so these roots grow towards the place where plenty of water is present this is known as positive hydrotropism positive hemotropism means the growth of pollen along the tube towards the ovule look at this picture here we are taking two similar pots we keep one pot vertical and the other pot toppled down as shown in the figure after several days if we observe in both pots the root grows towards the ground this shows the movement of the plant root is always positive geotropism and the movement of plant shoot is negative geotropic because it moves away from the ground in nastic movement the response of the direction does not depends on the direction of stimulus it means the direction of these movements are specific response is always toward a specific direction irrespective of the direction of stimulus so this reaction is not related to the growth substances trigger by external stimulus most of them are movements due to trigger change think about the mimosa plant okay in mimosa plant you can observe two different types of nastic movement one is haptonastic movement other one is seismonastic movement in mimosa plant the sleeping movement can be occur due to a touch or by make a vibration near to the plant when you touch a mimosa plant the leaves shows the sleep movement it is a haptonastic movement when you create a vibration without touching the leaves of the mimosa plant shows the sleep movement it is a seismonastic movement so now you understand the difference between tropic movement as well as the nastic movement right other than these movements there's another movement called tactic movement in tactic movement the whole organism responds to the stimulus plants are subject to more hazard than animals because they can't locomote okay for plant to grow in a habitat it needs all the necessary external factors so if the external hazards are present the plants can be destroyed easily in its habitat so it is essential to conserve the plants in its own habitat conservation of an organism in its living environment is known as in situ conservation ex situ conservation means taking away the organism from its native environment and preserve it in another protective environment okay strictly reserve forest which protect indigenous plants like ebony satinwood vitex are example for in situ conservation so in this unit we discuss about support and movements of animals and plants also we study about the in situ conservation for preserving the plants okay thanks for watching like share and subscribe to j science up for more videos related to science